Hi, my name is Chris Bernard. I'm a product manager for Intel RealSense, and I manage the L515 LiDAR camera. Uh, this is the world's uh, smallest high-resolution LiDAR camera. Now, for the next few minutes, I'll take you through some of the specifications of the camera. We'll look at how it works and what makes this a unique option if you're looking for a depth camera for your application. The L515 camera has three main functional blocks. The first block is the transmission, and that consists of a laser and a MEMS mirror. The laser hits the mirror, and the mirror moves around um, to project that laser beam across the entire field of view. The receiver portion of the camera uh, consists of a custom photodiode. Uh, that's receiving the light uh, that's bounced off of objects in the scene. And then the third main element of the camera is the custom ASIC. All the processing uh, for depth happens on the camera itself. None of our depth processing needs to happen on the host. Our custom ASIC is taking the information from the receiver and processing that into usable depth information that's then transmitted out USB to the host computer. L515 uses time of flight technology to understand how far objects are away from the camera. Uh, a lot of time of flight cameras use a flash based method of time of flight. Uh, a single flash of light is sent out and a standard uh, camera sensor is used to receive uh, that light information. The L515 doesn't work in that manner. The L515 uses a scanning LiDAR for its time of flight. And there's a few advantages to uh, operating time of flight in this manner. Um, the illustration on the screen shows a representation of how the laser is projected into the scene. The MEMS mirror directs the laser from left to right, up to down. Each of the red points in the illustration represents a depth point. We calculate about eight gigapoints per second inside the L515 that happens on the custom ASIC. The max resolution of depth that's supported in the camera is XGA. The camera produces many more points of depth than we actually output in depth pixels. The high density of depth points created by the L515 means that we have a very high resolution depth output. The scanning mechanism of the L515 also means that the exposure time for each depth point is very, very fast, to the point where there's no motion blur with L515. And lastly, the scanning technology also means that L515 operates at a much lower uh, power consumption than uh, compared to flash-based uh, time-of-flight cameras. The L515's scanning technology also means that it requires much lower uh, power requirements than a typical flash-based time-of-flight camera. The L515 generates a depth map that is 70 degrees wide by 55 degrees tall. Depth is output and resolution options of XGA, VGA, and QVGA. Um, all the depth frames are output at 30 frames per second. The L515 peripheral also has a 2 megapixel color camera and an IMU built in. So altogether, the camera can stream a color image, depth image, and a stream IMU information. And with the depth, we actually have a few different pieces of information that we can stream out. There are three components to the depth stream. First is the 2D depth map that we output, which is what you normally think of uh, when operating a depth camera. We can also output a confidence stream. Uh, that's uh, four bits per pixel 
of confidence information. Um, this means that for each pixel, the camera is determining how confident it is in the depth information it's producing for that pixel. Now, this can be useful for developers, and we'll talk a little bit uh, more about this later on. We can also output the IR intensity stream. The IR intensity stream maps perfectly with depth. And then, I, as I mentioned before, it has a two megapixel color camera, and we calibrate the camera in the factory so that the color image maps on top of the depth. Now we'll take a look at a specific use case for L515. I mentioned before that L515 has a high depth resolution and high accuracy, which makes it great for measuring. And that's what we'll do now. So we'll take a look at the Intel RealSense Dim Weight software, or DWS. And it's an SDK that customers can use to build a solution to measure packages uh, for logistics and warehousing applications. For this demo, we'll assume that I already loaded the application on my system. I received an activation code from Intel and the license is already installed and set up. Okay, the initial screen that you see when you open up the application um, is a helpful illustration to tell you how far away the camera should be from the box, as well as the angles um, you can see from my camera setup here, I don't have the camera pointing straight down because the legs of the triton get in the way. But I have it at a very steep angle. So I'll definitely be within uh, the 45 degrees um, that this illustration is telling me about. We'll go ahead and start the camera. What the application is doing now is it's finding the L515 that's connected to the laptop. It's looking at the serial number of the camera and comparing that to the license file that's already been loaded and activated. So we can see that we have a valid license and we're streaming the camera now. Um, the big window that we're seeing is a live depth stream. So I have the camera pointed at the floor. There's a couple of objects on the outside of the frame, that's fine. Uh, we'll make sure that all the boxes are in the center of the, of the floor. The floor is clean from any boxes or debris um, for me to, to, which we'll need because we're doing a calibration next. So you can see on the right side of the frame is telling us that a one-time calibration is required. Now we'll do a standard floor calibration for this demo um, because the floor is giving us uh, a great information for the camera. We do have a target calibration method. Um, you can click there to do the target calibration. We're not gonna do that. Um, the reason why you'd want to is if you had a very uh, reflective floor, um, or if you had a surface that the camera is having a hard time detecting, maybe dark carpet or something like that. Another reason to use a target would be if you had an uneven surface that you're measuring boxes on. Uh, a good example would be a roller table. Roller tables have lots of spheres the box would be on. There's not really a flat surface for us to calibrate to. The target gives us that flat surface. Uh, but like I said, right now, we're not gonna use the target. We're just gonna to calibrate to the floor. This just takes a few seconds. Now, once calibration is complete, the camera should not move. If the camera does move, there is a recalibrate button here in the top right. And that'll take us through the calibration process again. Okay, so calibration is complete and we're ready to measure. So, grab a box and put it under the camera. It's important to make sure that the box remains inside the yellow boundary on the screen. And in just a couple of seconds, you'll see DWS measurements on the right side. You can see height, width, length, and the total volume of the cuboid. At the bottom of the window, you can see more details, including the angle of the camera to the top of the box, the distance from the camera to the top of the box, the measurement time, and this is the time it takes from clicking the measure button to the SDK actually producing the measurement. You may notice that when running the application, the measurement time displayed is shorter 
than the time it took for the actual measurement to show up on the screen. This is because the demo application was not optimized for the system that you're running on. It's important to keep in mind that the measurement time we're reporting here is the time it takes for the SDK to report the measurement. We also report a confidence measurement here. In this case, 10 out of 10. In some cases, the system may not get a good read on the first frame it captures and would automatically capture more frames so that it has additional information to be able to get an accurate measurement of the box. We report this confidence measure to the user so that if you see low confidence values, you know that there may be something in the scene to troubleshoot. Some example of things to watch out for when using DWS. Because DWS uses the L5 bit theme, which is an IR based camera, it's important that ambient sunlight is kept to a minimum. It's also important to understand that some objects reflect IR and some objects absorb IR. When using DWS, we recommend that you limit ambient sunlight in the scene and also avoid materials such as shiny black plastic, which can cause interference with the depth map. We can measure another box by clicking the next box button, putting a new box into the scene and clicking the measure button again. No need to recalibrate because we did not move the camera. DWS SDK uses the L515 LiDAR camera to measure boxes quickly and accurately. You can build a millimeter accurate system using the DWS SDK. In fact, DWS is legal for trade ready meaning that if you build your system with DWS SDK and the L515, your entire solution can be certified as legal for trade. DWS measures boxes as small as five by five by five centimeters and up to full size pallets. DWS SDK is available as a free trial download, and also as a one-year paid-for license. At the website, you can also find the DWS datasheet, which can guide you through the APIs used in the SDK and provide you the full specification of the product. So in the example so far, we're measuring boxes that what we would consider those to be perfect cuboids. In reality, as boxes are handled, they do get damaged. Um, corners may be smashed in, holes can develop on the side. Or as a, in this example, uh, the box wasn't put together completely before it was taped down. So there's a gap in this side of the box. This means that the actual measurement of the box will be a little bit larger than what was intended. This is important to keep in mind. DWS is measuring the actual dimensions of the box. We would recommend that for your testing of DWS, you manually measure each side of the box in three locations, at both edges and in the center and average out those measurements to get a good understanding of the actual measurements of the box and then compare those to what DWS is presenting. DWS will provide measurements of the entire box, including this distortion. The recommended way to measure a box like this is to put a flat object against the side of the box and then measurements would be taken from the flat object instead of the edge of the box. This allows us to take into account the overstuffed portion of the box. Once again, it's a good idea to take multiple measurements of the box 
and average those out when comparing manual measurements to the measurements provided by DWS. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any additional questions about the product, a good place to start is intelrealsense.com. There you can find uh, data sheets, blog posts, and old webinars. Uh, thank you very much.